Hello everyone and welcome back to Phasmophobia. Now, if you know anything about the game, you know that there has been a bit of a change recently. And by a bit of a change, I mean everything has been reset. The Great Reset has happened. Everyone has been bumped back to level 1. There have been over 50 new items added. And with 50 new items comes the need to completely restart and relearn the entire game. So we're actually going to go in today, we're going to look around, we're going to find out what has changed, and I've heard that there is a brand new tutorial, which I'm going to need because quite frankly, I know nothing about what we're doing anymore. So we're going to go in, we're going to look around, see what's changed, go into the tutorial, and then we'll take it from there. We'll play some rounds coming in the future, but first we got to figure out how to do everything. So if you guys are excited for this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. And without further ado, welcome back to Phasmophobia. Let's go! Alright, the first thing I want to point out is that before the reset, I made it to about level 20, 21. I'm not sure if it was level 20 or level 21, but it was definitely far enough that it advanced me to tier 1. As you can now see from the ghost hunting recruit, I am no longer an intern. I am now a recruit. Level 101. So this is tier 1, level 1. I have no money. And my border is now yellow. So that is different. We have been bumped up to tier 1 because we had played before the update. If you have not played before the update, you are still not at tier 1. But since I was at level 20 and on the verge of unlocking pretty much everything, it went ahead and bumped me up to level 1. Also, the second thing here is that if you guys watched any of the previous videos, I have still had 4 maps to unlock before I had all of them. I had not unlocked... I just unlocked prison on my last round, so I still had to unlock Camp Woodwind, Sunny Meadow, Sunny Meadows Restricted, and I think there was another one. I can't remember which one it was right off. So I had at least three more maps that I had to unlock. Bumping up to tier one, I have unlocked every single map that we can play, so that's going to be fun for future games. Most of these I've not played yet because we've been stuck with the houses, knowing how those kind of laid out and how those kind of set. But we're not going into those tonight. Tonight we're doing the tutorial. So let's go right here. And we're going to start training. Because I don't know about you, but we need some training. Are you sure? I am very sure I need training. Thank you. Training. We've created a warehouse for you to master your ghost hunting skills. Well, that's different right off. Tip. Use your equipment to locate the ghosts and find evidence. That's good. Now, we did not have a warehouse before. Last time, we I think we went to it. Now, it wasn't Edgefield, but it was the first map. Maybe Tanglewood? That's where we learned how to do it. Welcome to your first day. Read the whiteboard to get started. Welcome! Here at Ghost Hunting Distribution, we'd like to welcome you to our training facility. To start, grab a flashlight behind you. Flashlight grabbed. You can toggle the flashlight with use if equipped or special if it's in your inventory. Is that T? Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. You can cycle through your held items to change which one you are holding. You can carry three items at once, so that's the same as before. When you're ready, grab the key to the right. Then interact with the keypad to the left of the door, so open the truck and move to the next section. So, looking at these... Mouse 1, mouse 2, grab is E, place is F, drop is G, so those are the same. Cycle is Q, special is T, I never even figure out what T was for. J is journal, and C is crouch. So yeah, those are all the same functions, nothing there has changed. Welcome to the warehouse, that is very different what I'm used to seeing. Okay, what is this going to present to me? I do not know. Ghost room. Your first goal when entering a haunted location is to find the ghost's favorite room. This is a room where the ghost will spend the majority of its time. Of course. To find the ghost room, look out for open doors. Items that have been thrown or sounds coming from that area of the location. When playing higher difficulties, ghosts can change their favorite room when wandering. A.K.A. not Agorio. To open a door, interact with it and move forward. Here's the door. Open. Nice. Okay. Mission complete. Room 1. All right, anything in room one that I should know about? Some clipboards. I'm just gonna take the clipboards, because I can. Oh, uh, there's nothing, I can't read that. Fine, I can't read that. Be that way, don't give me any lore. See if I care. I'm sure there's lore in this thing. Extra 
through the door to the next section. I'm going to lie and say that did not scare me at all. <laughs> okay. This is a training. The ghost cannot kill you. Actually, I didn't say that this time. I said that last time. I didn't say that this time. Room number two. We got donuts. We got some free donuts over here. Are we just practicing going through doors? Okay. Room number three. Coffee cup. Notebook. Another coffee cup. Looking to see what might be out of place later. That door is already open. I guess we're going this way through the open door. All right. Sanity. Each investigator has their own sanity level represented in the truck by the percentage on the screen. When playing in a team, you also have an advantage sanity level, an average an advantage sanity level, an average sanity level. Several things can lower your sanity, standing in the dark, ghost events, and abilities. You can restore your sanity level by using sanity medication. Try drinking one using a bottle below. It'll take a few seconds to replenish. To grab one below, then use it. You should be able to see your sanity increase on the screen to the left. Sanity medication will have different amounts of rest restoration depending on the difficulty you are playing. My name is Loading. Fantastic. All right. I will find one of these. Did I drink it? I did. Oh, look. It restored my sanity. Like, 2%. Good job. Thank you. All right. Next door just opened magically on its own. Fantastic. Lighting. I thought that said lightning. Lighting. To keep your sanity stable, you should stand in lit rooms or areas as much as possible. You can turn lights on using their switch. Aim at the switch and then interact with it. Each location has a maximum amount of lights that can be turned on at once. If you exceed that number, the fuse box will trip and turn off every light. We found that out the hard way before. You can turn the fuse box back on by interacting with its switch. Try tripping the fuse box by playing with the lights to the right. Then turn the fuse, back back, fuse box back on. So it's on right now. So here are the light switches we can play with. I like this. This is so much more well done. in depth. That only had like a sanity of two. A life of two. Sanity. Interact. Interacting. Why are those glowing? What is the purpose of those glowing? This is so much more in depth than the original one was. I, I, I like the original one, but I frankly do not understand how to use all the equipment going through the first version of it. So this is so much more detailed and I like this. Okay. So we're going in here now. Oh, I don't think I need my flashlight on. That's fine. Electromagnetic fields, also known as EMFs. In a normal contract, you will only need to find up to three evidence types, but for this training, we'll be showing you all seven. Thank goodness. EMF spots are left behind in almost any, everything that a ghost interacts with. These hot spots last around 20 seconds and can be read with an EMF reader. Grab your EMF reader below, turn it on with use, which is my right click, then move it towards objects that a ghost has recently interacted with. Some ghost types will leave stronger EMF hotspots. If your EMF dis reader is displaying a strength of 5 or higher, this is evidence. Open your journal by pressing the journal button, click the evidence tab at the top of the page, and mark EMF as indicated. So, oh, what is this monstrosity? What is this? Okay. I'm, I'm, it looks like a... What are those things called that you use to check for radiation. That's what this looks like. I'm going to be honest with you. What did you touch? Touch something in here. You, your favorite room is a room full of tables. What? Oh, there you go. Thank you. I see what you touched. Nice work. So it's four? Is it a three and a half? It's a... It's about a three and a half, four. It's not a five. Okay touch something else you know I'm coming back to see what else you threw right you do something over here okay it's fine it's a three and a half we did it we, we did what we were supposed to do is it right there still a three and a half okay not not a piece of evidence but definitely three and a half that is so weird I'm not sure how I feel about that yet okay I'm gonna put that down I don't think I need that anymore where am I where am I going in here Oh, pull. There we go. Alright. Well, this isn't dark at all. Ugh. Oh, we did this one. I was like, this is the lighting room. I'm like, this is so dark. So maybe I need to go... Oh, it's over here. I am dumb. It's over here. Alright, ultraviolet. Now, this is the thing that was supposed to be new. Some ghost types will leave behind UV handprints on doors. Windows and even footprints on the floor if they walk into some well-placed salt. I have seen that before. This is fingerprints. To grab these... Oops. 
to find these, list them out for paranormal interactions on these objects. Then grab your UV light, activate it with the use, then shine it around to see what prints have been left. If you find UV handprints or hand footprints, make sure to note them down in the evidence page in your journal. Lastly, if you shine UV light onto a print for long enough, it will become charged, allowing you to swap the camera to snap a quick photo for an extra cash. That is different. I like that. Because before, you just had to have a light there to take a picture with it. But if you charge it up long enough, that is useful. Okay. So we're going to want one of these. Okay. There's my light. What did you touch, good sir? Oh. We said don't leave. Well, that's different. So if I leave it here long enough, it'll stay charged. I'm not sure what that means. I like that. We said don't leave. Blatantly don't leave. Okay. I don't think I have a camera in here though. We'll always be with you. This is lore. Hello. Oh, this footprints. Oh. oh so those are the footprints we were looking for. Anything else? Anything else suspicious on the walls other than we'll always be with you and we told you not to leave? Where's th I see the lore coming in here. I, I noticed the lore before on the main rooms and, and in the truck with the magazine clippings, but I had never actually thought I'd see it in the training. I like this. Anything else I can find before I leave? I'm going to put my Matt Pat cap on here. And I think that's it. I think we said don't leave and we'll always be with you. So I'll put him down. Onward. Freezing temperatures, my favorite one. Ghosts are known for making the area around them colder, but some ghost types will push these temperatures below freezing. This is going to be different. I know this is going to be different. When navigating around a location, you may notice your breath becoming frozen in front of you, visualized by a cold cloud of air. If you find this, it may be worth checking the temperature of the room accurately. Accurately. To do so, grab a thermometer and walk into each room and then check the temperatures as they adjust. You're looking for anything below freezing, th 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If you find freezing temperatures, mark it in your journal. So what I've been told and what I have seen from other YouTube, the people who, the, the content creators who actually know what's going to happen here, freezing breath no longer means that you guaranteeably have freezing temperatures. You, it just means you found the ghost room. Um, so more in a specter-like form, it does not mean you have freezing temperatures. You actually have to bring a thermometer in now and check. It just tells you immediately that you got the ghost room. Which is helpful, but also not really helpful at the same time, if you get my drift there. Alright. Oh! Oh, we're going old style with this. Uh, I just assume I just walk around with it. Oh, it's a mercury <laughs> thermometer. This is going to take a minute. All right. Oh, and we have to wait for it to go down? Are you... No, I don't like that. <laughs> it's at 15. It's lowering. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that it's not a digital one. Why is it not a digital one? Why is this tier one? We literally have to stand here and wait for it to go down. But it's not going down in this room. Maybe it is, I can't tell. That's so weird. I mean, I know how to use a thermometer, but this is so weird. I'm gonna use Celsius, because that's easier to tell when you hit zero. I mean, I guess they're at the same level on this one, but usually it'd be a lot harder to tell than that, so. We're below 10. We literally have to sit here and wait for it to go down. I don't like that particular factor. I mean, I guess in the original Phasma, you had to wait for the temperature to go down, too. But I liked in the new version, all you had to do was walk in the room, and if the breaker wasn't on, you could tell immediately. So this is going to take some adjusting, too, to know you can't just walk in immediately and know what the temperature is until we get to level, like, tier 3 or something. Which, I mean, I only made it to level 20. I'd only been playing for, like, a month before the update. So, I mean, it's, it's going to take some time. 5. Are you going to go any lower? I'm definitely not taking the thermometer enough. Okay, it's getting colder in here. My chair is tipped over. That's suspicious. He's still dropping. He's still dropping. I think it's this room. Move to the next room. Got it. Yes, sir. 
Moving to next room. Goodbye, thermometer. I did not like you. Oh, I understood that. I can't say I liked it. <laughs> Alright. Oh, this is going to be fun. Dots projector. Dots projectors let us see things that normal light does not. Sometimes using this light will reveal a small flicker into the paranormal world. Several ghost types can be revealed with a dots projector. All you need to do is find them. Grab a projector, turn it on with the use, and aim the light where you think a ghost may be. So this is different. If you see a ghostly silhouette appear, then you found some evidence. Try to find a ghastly apparition in the loom room to your left. You can then mark it in your journal. Wait, should I have been marking stuff in my journal? Yeah, I mean, the other ones didn't tell me to write it in my journal. I was not paying attention to the instructions. Because it was, uh, was not EMF level 5. But I was not paying attention to the instructions, so. Oh, it's a... Ew, what is this? Oh, you're blatantly obvious. <laughs> okay, then. Good job. I, why is it a pen? Why is it a pen? I can't just put it down and see it anymore? You have to be right stinking on him? Oh, man. Okay. When a ghost reveals itself in its dots form, you will walk towards the closest player. Oh, yikes. It will walk towards the closest player if they're inside the same room. You can use this to get those particularly shy ghosts to come within range of your dots' infrared lights. I don't like that it's going to walk towards me. That's going to give me a heart attack. Last pretty much useless. Hey, I want to try something. If I put it here, can I face it and be able to see the ghosts? Not really. Okay. Well, that's just fantastic, isn't it? Is my next room over here? Yes, it is. Wonderful. Ghost orbs. I want to do spirit box. It said to mark it in the book. I was listening. See, it said to mark it in the book. All right. Often when filming paranormal evidence with a video camera, investigators have found unexplainable flecks of light that slowly drift across their footage. These have been named ghost orbs. To find them, grab a video camera and turn on the night vision with use. During contracts, you can place the video camera down and view the camera feed from the safety of a truck. Search around the ghost room and look for any small flecks of light moving around. If you find one, mark it in your journal. So now we have to go to night vision. Well, I mean, you're very blatantly over there, so I mean... can barely see anything out of the camera. Nice work. Nice work? I didn't even see it. Where was it? Where was said orbs? Because I didn't see them. Fine. Sure. <laughs> I literally cannot see them, but sure. Alright, where's my next door? My next door, hopefully it's out of the dark, is over here. So you have to turn on the night vision now. That's something they did not have before. You didn't have to have night vision on. Now you do. I'm not going to remember that. I guarantee it. Ghost writing. My favorite. Some paranormal entities will interact with more objects than others. In several reported cases, ghosts have been known to write vague messages in books if left for long enough. Sometimes for an attorney. To get ghost writing evidence, grab a ghost writing book and, down and, s oh, and place it down somewhere near the ghost. After some time, the ghost will either throw the book or write in it. For the latter, note the evidence down in your journal. So yeah, if you throw the book on anything above amateur, it's not going to give it to you. So where am I putting it? Down somewhere near the ghost. Well, I don't know where the ghost is. Let's put it on the table here. Let's put that down. So either you're going to throw my book, or you're going to write my book. And I'm going to stand here until you do one or the other. I like that it's a notebook and a pencil, though. Literally, that's all it is, is a notebook and a pencil. So after enough time, it'll write in it. So very fancy te techniques you have here. Grab a pencil and paper. I'm going to take another one. I'll put one on each table. Maybe maybe it's a writing ghost. Maybe it's like me. Maybe he likes to write. Oh, I forgot to open it. I'm dumb. I forgot to open it. That's probably why it's not working, right? There we go. Which one are you going to write on first? You got two notebooks to make two novels. Well done. Oh, something happened. Oh! Oh, that animation was cool! Oh, it's a thing. I definitely... I'm just going to uncross this just for fun of it. It's still a thing. <laughs> I, I like that animation! What did you write? Can I can I see what you wrote for me? No? 
a whole bunch of scribbling. Okay. Did you write in that one? Oh, you wrote in that one too. Nice. Two for one. You are a very writing ghost. All right. We should be getting a spirit box. Yes. Spirit box. EMP, EVP recorders uh, or spirit boxes. Of course, call spirit boxes. That's easier. Are radio devices designed to scan through different frequencies, possibly revealing some paranormal audio amongst the static? To use a spirit box, grab one below and turn it on with use. Make sure that all room lights in the area are turned off. It's that you, then you can ask the ghost questions in hope of a response. Try asking, where are you? If you get a response, the indicator will flash white. And you should hear a voice that's unique amongst the radio frequencies. If it flashes red, your question was heard, but you didn't get a reply. So red does not mean you got it. Enter the next area to find the ghost room and find out. Okay, so... Unique to the ghost. That's that's an, an unusual choice of wording. Where's my next room? Oh, it's over here. So we gotta turn this off. Okay. Let's try this. Let's give us a whirl. Are you here? Are you close? Thank you for the Good job. What's your name? I'm sorry I missed that. Can you try it again? Can you throw the coffee cup again? Thank you. Where are you? What's your name? What's your favorite color? Where are you? Okay, you're right there. You're not going to talk to me anymore. Alright, well that was... I heard a voice. That was not a normal voice. That's not one of the normal voices I've heard on here. I've heard a lot, but that was not one of the voices I've ever heard. So that's interesting to know. See, there was a variety of responses you could get now. Like, more responses. I don't know what she said, but there was more responses. But, wait, if it's... I'm just marking everything. <laughs> it literally can't be any ghost. That's why it's funny. Okay. Hunts. Oh, no. <laughs> During contracts, ghosts can initiate an attack on you and your fellow investigators. These attacks will have a chance to occur once your sanity has reached an average threshold of 50%. Some ghost types might attack earlier or later than this. Depending on the difficulty you are playing, you may have a setup timer. This is normally displayed on a large LED clock in the truck, like the one to the right. Da-da! This will stop your sanity going below 50% as well as prevent hunts. When a hunt starts, the exit doors will lock and the ghost will start searching for you. Turn off your equipment, hide in a locker, or craft behind something tall and wait till it's over. Enter the next room to simulate a hunt. Great. That's my favorite thing here to simulate a hunt. Right. I know how this works. I know how this works. Something's not quite right. Quickly. Light off, light off. That was a close one. Congratulations on completing your training. You can exit through the truck by interacting with the keypad. That would have worked a lot better if my flashlight turned off! Looks <laughs> oh, I wasn't on it, duh. Yeah, where's the key? Where's... Not quite right. I hate you. Better hide. Quickly. Would you kind of like to point out where it is? Where the truck is? He's not gonna do anything until I get into a locker. Where's the truck? That was a close one. Congratulations on completing your training. You can exit through the truck by interacting with the keypad. What keypad? What truck? Oh, here. I was like, I don't see the truck, nor do I see a keypad. <laughs> it's over here. The big sign says exit. I don't trust that. All right. Enter the truck and use the keypad to exit. Yeah, okay, that basically didn't really change other than the stuff looks like 100 times older. <laughs> That wasn't bad at all. It really wasn't. I like that you can simulate a hunt now. That's great. All right, guys. Well, that was the training. That was so much different than the first training. I also, before we want to go, want to look around. I think they unlocked the tier items. Let's go look at those real fast. Oh, yeah. Look at all this stuff. Look at all this. This is tier one, two, and three. So there's our first tier. There's, our, there's the one we're used to, which is tier two. And then tier, th what on earth is that hulking mass of a spirit box? <laughs> that is tier number three, apparently. We have, oh goodness, 
all these things. So it's like tier two is what we're used to on everything. Um, but we're, we're gonna start at the beginning of tier one. Are those matches? Are those legit matches? Matches lighters, giant lighter. You're gonna make me go in there with matches? <laughs> Sirs? <laughs> oh, that was like a Lumiere. We got lanterns, those will be fun. Crucifix crucifixes, this looks like an, uh, a gothic crucifix. This looks like a crucifix. You're gonna take on Satan himself, it looks like that one. And then we've got smudge sticks, whatever that is, and that's a giant smudge stick. Our motion sensors, cool, cool, cool. So it looks like level one sensors are what we're used to, unless this is level one sensors, which, which could be. And then our tripods have noses, good to know, good to know. Then this is our dots projectors. I am going to strongly dislike those pins, but especially if they come towards you when you use them. That's different, because last time I just like sprint through it, they don't come at you if you have a dot holding. That's gonna give me a heart attack. All right, guys, well, that is the end of the training video. We have seen what has changed in Phasmophobia. I am terrified to go and actually try the game. We'll start building up our tier, see if we can get up to tier three. I think it's gonna take a little bit of work before we get there, but hey, every step of the way is part of the journey. We've unlocked all the maps, so we should be able to go. And again, if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. This channel's been taken over by Phasmophobia. It literally has. It's Pokemon and Phasmophobia at this point. So I was looking forward to this update. It did not disappoint. This is going to be so much fun. And I will see you guys next time. KW5, out.